welcome back. I've got Amelia Antonelli on the line. Amelia, how are you? Great. Every day above the ground. <laughs> that, that, in, in, in the middle of a pandemic, that's even more important than it used to be. Not that it wasn't important before, but wow. Yeah, I, I agree. So great to have you on the show. Uh, we talked quite a bit even in the, in the pre-show about things, but uh, let's go ahead and start off you know, with a little bit about your background and this work that you're doing regarding people and you know, their genius that they have within themselves. Uh, I mean, so I've been a serial entrepreneur before there was a word serial entrepreneur. I started my first company at 17. I sold it at 19 and I've done almost a dozen since then. And I love the space of building and creating something that helps people move forward, that improves lives, that just creates a better uh, we environment. And so all of my companies have been um, disruptive in an industry. So for example, I brought green mainstream. So green was a color before I brought uh, the company forward. And then I ended up selling that to one of the big boys. Um, and, you know, company after company has been solving a problem that I felt the masses uh, could use for a, a positive uh, outcome. And so I thought I was semi-retired. Um, after my work with Steve Harvey um, and you, you know NBC Universal, I was like, okay, I'm done. Um, I was going to just kind of move a little bit more into um, you know writing and and giving people uh, like a recipe towards success. And I started to realize that the people operating system, right? So. Any company is really just a bunch of individuals, right, housed within an organization, is that a lot of the problems that were happening in the last several years that had come to light was because the people operating system in a business isn't healthy. It's actually, it, it's just not conducive for a healthy individual. And I was like, well, maybe I should then, instead of just sharing kind of success tips, maybe I should really share how I've been building and turning around companies and going into a crisis and literally just turning a company on its head for such positivity. And then I was like, well, you know, that's, that's really a brand new reinvention. I was like, I don't really know if the world is ready for let's do this, you know, sometimes a band-aid doesn't work. Sometimes you got to pull the whole thing down and start from scratch and go, what do I really want to accomplish? What's the ideal outcome here? You know, what should a business really look and feel like? But there was so much evidence that were showing me how um, the younger generation no longer want to own things. They want to be able to have experiences. And the second life uh, careers were looking for just a healthier way to show up with everything. Um, and then the pandemic ha happened and I was like, Ooh, th whoop, oops, this is the universe saying none of this has worked. And this is a big reset to say, coming out of this, are you going to come out of this time better than you were? Are you going to come out of this time as a higher and better, better self? And not just as individuals, but are we going to make those decisions as leaders inside companies? Because the old way just does not work. And I was like, well, let's put it out there. Let's put it out there. Let me just kind of pull back the curtain and show people what I've been doing in thousands of businesses. I mean, my, my resume is, is a plethora full of industries of the work that I've done. And I've always been the girl behind the scenes and I was happy to be the girl behind the scenes. I didn't care, I really didn't care if anybody knew me. Um, and I still don't really care if anybody knows me. I care if you know the work. And from the work, what you do to, with it is entirely up to you. And the goal, which I know is gonna sound very uh, simplistic, the goal for me was to put this out there in masses to heal pain. It's just to heal pain, pain within organizations, pain within family, pain within the community, and pain with us within us as an individual. We're in an enormous amount of pain, physically, mentally, and spiritually. And I'm like, here's a tool. If it works for you, have at it. If it doesn't, hit the leap. And you hit it right on the head. Right now, especially during this pandemic and even before, the pandemic. The work I do is in the burnout space and I was seeing all kinds of people, organizations, leaders, every level, every industry burning out. And then the pandemic hit and it's getting worse. 
and because of working from home burnout and all the you know, boundaries or lack thereof of organizations and individuals and the pain and the struggle and the uncertainty and everything that's going on, everyone, it doesn't matter what level you're at, is experiencing some type of discomfort or pain in all of this. And it varies to degrees, but some are really having a horrible time with this period of time and some are navigating through it okay. But ultimately, uh, utilizing your tool, your expertise in helping people get, I'm a big fan of clarity. And I think a lot of people lack clarity of what's going on in their own lives and uh, inside their heads and their minds and how they're feeling and all of these things. Well, we've been burning out for steadily for 30 years. Mm -hmm. This is, this did not just happen, yeah. right? We have been getting a abundance of evidence for decades that how we are choosing to show up in the world and how we're living in a society is not healthy. We have moved so far away from what we know um, as humans, just our hierarchy of needs, what we need. We've moved so far, we don't even, I don't, we don't even recognize each other anymore. And you've seen that with the magnitude of just anger and hate that has just infiltrated this last decade. And so we had warnings along the way. We, we've known that this isn't working, but yet there wasn't an easy way to say, okay, well, this is not working, so let me choose this. There's been bits and pieces of solutions that all seem painful. And so we continue on with what we know, knowing that it's not a good choice for us until there is an appending event where you have no choice which is major illness, death, right? Some big explosion, which is crisis management, that's what I do, happens where you have no choice. You've got to make a left or right hand decision. Why we wait to that is still beyond me. And so what, what I'm pointing out isn't anything new. We've all known, we all internally know that it hasn't been working. If we remember where we were just before the pandemic, People were saying, I hate my neighbor, I hate my family, I hate my wife, I hate my husband, I hate my kids, I hate my job, my boss sucks, commuting sucks, everything sucked. We hated everything. Well, the universe said, okay, reset. Now you are, all are contained into your homes and we're going to remove all those things that you hate. And now we're like, oh my gosh, I would give anything to go back to work and have coffee with the person I just said I hated six months ago, or to just be able to go to dinner or socialize, right? So what did we learn is one of our primary hierarchy of needs. Well, the fundamental, and I'm speaking as a behaviorist, what we know about humans, all humans, no matter who you are, doesn't matter what package you come in, doesn't matter what religion you are, doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter where you are in the world, all humans need connection. We will die on our own. And we're feeling what it feels like now with this massive amount of isolation, this fear of connecting, bonding. What am I going to get from you? What am I going to catch from you? Um, which is really a mythology to say, how do you impact me, right? We're thinking about that core question on who do we choose to trust? Who do we choose to connect to? How far is too far? How close is too close? We're really not looking at this time into the depth of what is the universal question really, which is who are you? Why are you here? How are you going to invest your time, money, energy, genius? with whom and for what greater cause, right? You plus me creates a third entity. What is the energy that we're creating so that things are done more intentionally instead of just default? Because the abdication of responsibility that we have gotten to as a society, not my problem, I don't care, all of that, isn't healthy. It's just not healthy. And we've created an entire generation of this massive unhealthiness, which is going to continue and continue and continue. And so we've got to go back and just step up and realize that we are one 
big change. What you think and what you do and what you say matters. It matters immensely because that energy affects everything. Every single thing in the universe does that comes down to this connection. And so how do we now move to a healthier and better way? It's not going to happen overnight, but it can start right now, right now, because you, we don't need any more steps. Our suicide rate is off the chart. Our depression, our loneliness, our, our sense of why do I even care anymore? Right? We've gotten to a complete dead end. And so the only way out is together. We got into this together. We got to get out of this together, taking responsibility that every single thing matters. It has an impact. I completely agree with you. And I look at this time with this pandemic as an opportunity. It and is. I agree. It's the greatest opportunity in our life. It's not coming again. Yeah. The no, it's a greatest time in our life is right now because you have free will. We mm -hmm. forget that. We have free will. We can choose who we want to be. We can choose who we want to be, where we want to work, where we want to live. And we think that we can't. There's so many people say, well, I can't do that because I have this and this and this. Well, that's your choice and your thoughts. And, and that's what you're putting out there. So it's if, a false is, belief. It's a, and when I walk somebody through their, what they per, are perceiving, right? Everything's perception of the logic. When they actually get it outside of their head and out loud, they realize what they say makes no sense, right? The story that we tell ourselves quietly in our mind, it only makes sense to you when you're listening to it in your head. But the minute you get it out and put words, make it vocal, and then listen to it back, you go, oh, well, that's, that's, a, that's crazy. And I help people with that simple exercise. I'm like, just literally speak into it, at, on, open up your phone, make a recording, and just say what's going on in your head. And then go grab a cup of coffee, cup of tea, come back and listen to it as if you're listening to a friend speaking to you. And you'd be like, oh my gosh, that is crazy talk. That no, none of that is true, right? And so we have to get tools in place, I call them genius tools, to help us see the, the amazing incredibleness that's in inside every one of us. Every one of us is born with our genius. And the reason why you don't see it is because it's you, right? It's very hard to do your own brain surgery. So you don't recognize the things that are easy for you. You don't recognize the things that you have a natural uh, innate talent at, you only recognize the things that you're struggling with. So it's hard to see the other side. And so we try to put all these tools in place so that people can immediately start seeing their reflection of their genius. Because the minute you see it, you start to feel good. And the minute you start feeling good, you start moving in a direction of becoming healthier as an individual. And then as a healthier individual, you can have more grown up, healthy relationships. And then you're going to not ask, you're going to, to demand another level of service from the people on your team and the people that you work with and the people in your life. But you've got to move yourself to that. So the tools, the step-by-step -step mini tools are what are going to start to affect change. And it's not the same tool that works for everybody, right? This one size fits all is insanity, right? We're all different for a reason. We all struggle for different things. What makes me a genius may be what you struggle with, right? And vice versa. That's why a solution is we-centric, right? Nobody is any better or any worse than anybody else. We all have one piece to a huge recipe and we've got to contribute in order to create the outcome. I love the we analogy of it because, and even, you know, I know many people that are introverts and they said this time, even though it was like, wow, we actually got what we wished for, like where we wouldn't be interacting with so many people, even them are feeling this lack of connection and it's there's something missing i'm not able to accomplish what i want to accomplish because the isolation was kicking in 
but I think and also, you know, I am an introvert. I am unbelievably a hermit. I would not leave my house ever. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this is the, 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 the illusion, or this is the false uh, projection people put on me because I've been a public figure because mm -hmm. people see me and they read about me. Their projection is she's an extrovert, right? Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. I am painfully shy. I am riddled full of insecurities. I second guess myself all of the time. What you see and what you feel are the tools that I am using that I use the tools to move myself out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. in order to be my highest and best self. Because I realize that I need other people in order to surface as my highest and best self. I cannot do it alone. I need you, right? I need other people. And so it's, it is the collective of we. And so I try to put truth out there the minute I hear it spoken incorrectly, when somebody says, oh, well, it's easier for you because you're an extrovert and you like people and you're social. And I go, oh my gosh, no, I'm not social. I am not an extrovert and I am not overly confident, right? You, you are feeling confidence because I've accomplished a lot of little things so that in my area, I appear confident, but I feel like I stumble and I fall and I'm falling down in the dark and the areas where I'm not comfortable. And so I, every single individual that you look at and you go, wow, they're incredible. What you have to realize is that you cannot see in others what does not live within you. So if you see something positive from me, it's your own reflection. If somebody sees something positive from you, it's their reflection. You can only see what's in yourself. I'm reflecting back you. So whatever you feel right now when you're listening or watching me, it's you. It has nothing to do with me. I am just the mirror that you're bouncing off of. And when you can start to see that, so maybe the story starts with, you know, I see the um, intentional do good is maybe what you're noticing right now in people around you and for you to start to realize that that's a seed that's growing within you, right? That's the omen to tell you that you're really here to do good work as well so that you can join the momentum, the energetic pull to surround yourself with more people that are doing what it is that you're identifying and you're seeing in them because you're really seeing yourself, if that makes any sense. It does and it actually provides me some enlightenment regarding when I'm working on an endeavor that is growing me personally, I start encountering people that are doing, they might be doing similar work or maybe not, but they're doing work that's in unison with what I'm working at and we see it and we grow. And even I had a conversation yesterday with an organization and we were both on the same page on everything, which is often rare. There's usually a couple things you need to sort through, but it was like, okay, wow. It's like, is my name on that building? It's like, it's as if it's my company. It's like, what in the world's going on here? This is weird. But it, it's one of those things Universal where- Universal pull, right? What well, is, yeah. It will pull you towards your ultimate purpose and destination if you just open to be receptive. And when you remove right and wrong, um, yes and no, if you remove all that negative language and just realize that either something is moving you towards what you're supposed to be focusing on right now, or it's moving you away from something. It's not to say that what it's moving you away from is bad. It just isn't working for you right now. You may revisit that in another point in time. Everything is about ebb and flow. Am I moving towards what it is that I'm learning, that I'm working on, that I want to put my energy towards in order to create something bigger than myself? Or do I need to move away from it right now? Because right now it's not serving me, right? And so we move away from certain people because they're not serving us into our highest and best will. We move away from companies. We move away from projects. We move away from neighbors and other conversations that just go, oh, you know what? No judgment doesn't feel very good to me. So I'm gonna move away from that because it's not feeling good to me. And I'm gonna move closer to something that does serve me. 
right? And when you use that language, then what's happening is I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you. I'm not putting any judgment on what you're doing is right or wrong. I'm just saying, oh, you know what? This conversation is not feeling really good for me. So I'm going to remove myself from this conversation and I'm going to move over here because this feels better to me. It's all about me. It's not, I'm not putting any judgment over it. How about it? I'm just moving myself, right? Same thing when you're making decision about the projects and the team and the companies that you're working for. Is it serving you? Are they serving you the way that elevates you to feel great about yourself, to feel great about the work? If it's not serving you, then that's the indication you need to start looking for something else. If you're in a relationship and it's not feeling good, then you need to start using the tools to say, listen, just want to let you know, I'm not feeling like you're seeing me, you're hearing me, you're understanding me. I want to... I want to, what can I do differently so that you can understand what you're doing right now isn't working for me. Here's a suggestion. Let's try this, right? Everything is about small acts of awareness so that you can try other things until both parties go, you know what? That is working for me. Great. Let's do more of that and let's stop doing this. But it's a trial and error, right? You have to try it on and go, hmm. Not really sure. I'm gonna put that in the maybe category. Oh, no, that definitely doesn't work. Put that in the no category. And then this one, this feels great. Let's bring in more of that. And realize you have to release all judgment. It's, it's not for you to dictate what is or isn't right for somebody else, for what is right for a company or for a team. You just have to speak honestly about, is it working for you? And if it's not working for you, let's have an adult conversation so we can try until it does serve you. And then you've got growth from both individuals. A lot of it comes down to personal accountability to giving yourself permission to live your life the way that it's supposed to be lived. And I find so many people, especially the ones that are struggling through all kinds of things, it's, it seems like they've delegated that choice and they're not in unison with what the universe is guiding them. And, you know, going back to what we mentioned earlier, this time, like you said, is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to completely change things to the way that we truly want them to be. And I'd love to hear your insight on what's your hope for people to this opportunity that we have right now. What do you think are some common things that people could do? I know everybody's different, but are there some common things that everyone could do right now to make sure that when we navigate out of this pandemic into what I like to call the next normal, whatever that's going to look like, right. what, what would you hope that people would do? So um, I like what you said about that there are so many people right now that, um, and I'm paraphrasing, that are just in an enormous amount of pain, right? That they just, they're at a place where they have given up control and they're just kind of coasting along. But they feel and they wake up and they go to bed and they carry this huge weight of pain within them. And that's how I, that's my interpretation of what it is. It's just a big ball of stuck pain. And what I'd like people to consider, right? Very simple to start with. The pain is coming from not being seen, heard, recognized, valued, and rewarded in your language. So any individual, it doesn't matter if they're unbelievably wealthy, if they're unbelievably bloke, or they've got a great career or a crappy career, a good relationship, a bad relationship. What we're talking about, the way out is in. It is not outside of you. If you are looking for a solution that is outside of yourself, if you can hear one thing from this, I promise you with 100% certainty, the answer is not outside of you. I promise you 35 years of experience, 50 some on thousand employees. I've done dozens of companies. The answer is never outside of self. Not ever. Every book that you read, every, anything that you go to, it will talk about this inward journey. 
that inward journey, the reason why people avoid it is to go in. There is such a ball full of mush in there that is hurt and tangled and twisted. You, we don't even, we can't even identify what this thing is, but it's an internal stock of energy that is causing you to feel right judged or uh, not connected or vulnerable or not good enough or all of those things. Is, is tied up in this inner stuckness. And it causes a lot of negative stories that say you're not relevant and that you don't matter and all of that stuff is stuck inside of here. And what the first step is, the first step out is just to say, I'm going to just be open to let this thing untangle itself think about a big ball of something that you squished up so tight for so long all we're going to do is we're going to loosen our grip okay <laughs> let's just give it a little bit of air and not to be afraid of it because the answer is through this there's you can't hand it off to somebody nobody's coming inside you to do the work none of that is possible right we're just going to loosen our grip a little bit and realize that what you're focusing on is to be seen heard recognized or validated, right? Every human needs a witness. And if we can just start in the give and take, right? To say, I see you, I heard you, I recognize, I am witnessing that you are in pain. I don't need to fix it. This is where people go wrong. You're not asking me to fix it. You're asking me to hear you when you say, I am not having a good day. I hear that. I, that must really feel like shit. What can I do to serve you knowing that you're having a shitty day? And it may be, you know what, Amelia, we can do? Change your tone of your voice. Can you maybe just get out of my space so I can be a little bit more alone? Can you give me a hug? Can you take one of my chores? Can you pick up the kids from school? Can you cook dinner? Can you run me a bath? Can you just, I don't wanna see any dishes. It doesn't have to make any sense for what you ask for. You are worthy and you're asked just because I care about you. I don't have to agree with what you ask. I don't have to understand it. All I have to say is, you are worthy. I see that you're in pain and I'm going to run that bath. I'm going to do those dishes. I'm going to, I'm going to, just to serve you so that you can go, wow, I have that power. Heard me, saw me, recognized I needed help, witness, and valued me in the things that I asked for. And I will tell you, 99.9% .9 of people, if a total stranger on the street, if you walk up and go, hey, I'm sorry, would you mind, could you grab that door for me? 99.9% .9 of people will open that door for you. If you go, hey, listen, can you just hold, hold it first? I got it. Simple acts of kindness is how we are going to get back to a connected society that cares and that it matters. And it sounds simple, but I'm like, just try to go through one hour by being kind, simple things. Literally, the next person that you see, whether it's at a Dunkin' Donuts or whatever, just say, thank you so much. What can I do for you? Most people will go, I have no idea. Most people have not spent any time thinking about what is your perfect day? What is that perfect day? And we have an exercise. It's called a genius exercise it's called how you walk through your perfect day. Because when I ask people, what's your perfect day? Most people say, I just want more sleep, right? Or I just want right, the love of my life or whatever, right? And I keep going, okay, that's one thing. When I talk about a perfect day, I'm talking about from the moment you wake up your eyes, what happens? Then what happens? Then what happens? Then what happens? All the way a 24 hour period, what happens in that perfect day? If you can't show me and tell me and describe the experience of a perfect day, how can I ever give it to you? This is what's missing, the work. Yeah, the work is important and I love the part of going within and that's where all the answers are. And many people, especially people I work with that are burned out, 
and they, you know, they heal from the burnout and I said, okay, now it's time to work. And they look at me and they go, what work? And I said, you have to look within to figure out why you burned out in the first place. Because and that, again, another it. false belief, true learning, real learning, real growth hurts like hell. If you're in pain, it's because you're, you're entering a phase of growth, a phase of learning. After you learn, then you try, you know, you try to implement, you get some tools, you try to create a habit, and then you go through another phase of pain for the next level of growth. Pain is part of the process. No person has ever said, I had this huge learning epiphany. Oh, and it didn't hurt. Of course it does. It hurts like hell. So if there's somebody in your life who's in pain, what you need to understand that this isn't a beautiful opportunity of the unveiling of the butterfly, right? That they're in pain because they're transforming a step into their higher and better self. What we want is to help them realize that they're not stuck there forever. And the reason why people get stuck is they don't shed the old, right? What's stuck in here is all of the old that's not serving you that you have not let go. We've become a hoarder of energy. Let it go. It's not yours to carry. I think about it when I talk to my clients about uh, baggage, right? So when they come in to my office, I have them pick up a bunch of suitcases, literally, so they literally can't carry any more. And I go, that is what you're doing every single day. Would you like to put one of them down? Because one of them is your things from your parents. One of them is from your, you know, a million and one partnerships that we've tried along the way till we find the one that actually works for us. One of them is from society, this, this, this ball of false beliefs that doesn't actually work on anybody. It's not even healthy. You know, one of them is disappointment. One of them is, you know, rejection. One, all these things that you have to put down these suitcases, but you can't drop them all at one time. You're going to put them down one at a time. And the thing to learn is a healthy habit in a healthy adult relationship is that when somebody tries to hand you your suitcase, that's not yours for you to go, listen, I realize that is very heavy. And I am sorry that you are choosing to carry around that heavy suitcase. I can help you put it down, but it is not mine to carry. Don't pick up other people's work. You're doing a disservice for them and yourself, right? It's not healthy to pick up other people's work. So people that are full grown and are still in the over people pleasing, cause I'm gonna please you and please you. And when I please you, and then you're gonna like me, no. That's not healthy. The premise of the relationship is parent and child. We have moved away from parent and child, and now we want to have adult relationships. So if it's not a child who's asking you to carry something, you need to go, I'm sorry, I'm handing that back. That is not mine. And those are tools we just haven't learned. But as you learn more tools, it gets easier. This thing in here that's a ball full of mush starts to untangle. You put down the things that are heavy and you move lighter and more freer. Loved our conversation today. There's so much material in here. We could talk for about eight days straight about this yes. and not touch the surface. So, And can you imagine if a company was built that way? Now just imagine that a company is built that way, that a company serves each individual person that way, that it attracts people that match their genius and serves them back. That's what the genius key is all about. It's not just about healing individuals, it's about healing every single company and organization for a better way for the people operating system. And I have encouraged companies to reach out to you. So where can people find out more about this awesome work you're doing and where to find you on social media and all of that? I would love to hear from people. So Amelia.com. So if you can spell my first name, you can literally find me anywhere. A-M-I-L-Y-A. -A, so Amelia.com, Amelia and all the social handles. And you can invite, I invite you to go into the geniuskey.com, right? You can go right into the genius key itself and hear and see what it is that we're doing. Small steps of kindness uh, to be able to create a healthier place for everybody. And it's the only agnostic tool out there. It's completely blind. I don't know who you are, boy, girl, yellow, green, doesn't matter. I don't know who you are. It's all about the tools and the work. 
That's awesome. And I'll definitely have all that information in the show notes. So Amelia, thank you again for the work you do and, and for your time today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.